In today's video, my friends and I journey through better biomes, fight better mobs, and battle better bosses as we survive 100 days in Minecraft's true successor, Better Minecraft. Now, that's what I would say if I was lying to you. To be honest, we died a lot. More times than I could really keep count, but yeah, Better Minecraft, let's go. Day 1. A day for crafting the essentials. After that, our goal was to gather resources such as cobblestone, coal, iron, and anything that would help us upgrade our gear. Since we got a late start, day one came to an early close. After the smelting of some iron, the sun set, so we slept in a village. The next morning, we were off to explore this new world. Xavier got a head start and stumbled across a strange tower. After carefully climbing to the top, he discovered an incredibly useful item, a waystone. There was also a chest, and inside was some iron and ender pearls. After looting, he scoped out the area and spotted some ruins in the distance which we could stay at for the next couple of days. As for Noah and I, we were falling behind. Around sunset, we stumbled across a cabin and decided to check it out with hopes of finding loot. We stayed there for the night while Xavier... Let's just say he improvised his campsite. On day three, we discovered a portal in the attic. We also met the owner of the cabin known as the Gatekeeper. Noah decided to repay our host's kindness with his sword, but the Gatekeeper wasn't caught lacking. While Noah's body was decomposing, Xavier explored and looted the ruins and found some coal, while I was back at the mountain making preparations to trade with the Gatekeeper. Hi, how are you? I was given a blue journal, and inside was knowledge on a brand new dimension. After a long journey, Noah and I finally made it to Xavier, and now it was time to establish ourselves. It was time to get mining. Once again, Xavier got a head start and quickly found iron. He crafted some armor, and then it was time to explore the abandoned mine shaft. He found a minecart, and inside was a golden apple. He dodged a creeper, and then he came across some extra torches and some bread. After that, he finally found himself some diamonds. And not just one diamond, then there was the mob spawner. To keep the zombies from attacking him, Xavier decided to block the spawner off. He carefully built a little wall, and whatever zombies actually made it across, well, he killed them. After that, he broke the spawner and claimed the loot, including a dragon egg. Then he found diamonds, an enchanted book, and even more diamonds, and even more diamonds, and then he made armor. While Xavier was bathing himself in wealth, I was on my own crafting myself a humble set of iron armor, wondering where he was. He made his way back to the surface, scouted his surroundings, and then he made his way back to our town where, to our surprise, we saw him coated in diamond armor. After that, we decided to set sail, and Xavier was determined to let nothing or no one get in his way. When he was done dealing with us, he went off into the horizon. He then came across what looked like a well. Upon further investigation, he realized that this wasn't a well, but an entire underground village. The village heavily resembled a stronghold where you'd find the end portal. Walking through a maze of hallways, Xavier stumbled across multiple rooms, and in each room was a chest, although the loot inside the chest was pretty underwhelming. For some reason, the deeper he explored, the more decrepit the village became. He kept walking until he stumbled across a library full of books for our future enchanting table. Xavier mined as many books as he could before he decided that it was time to move on. Thinking he was only going to come out of there with a bunch of books, he then stumbled across iron blocks in the form of an iron golem. He quickly mined those, and then he came across what looked like some type of archaeology project. I don't know, it was just a bunch of bones, but it was interesting. Then he found a laboratory and someone's test subject. He left him there to die, and then he raided somebody's office. After that, Xavier considered himself satisfied with the loot he was carrying, so he made his way out. After that, we met up with Xavier. We decided to investigate a local fishing cabin where we killed the local fisherman, stole his catch of the day, and then we broke his spawner. While we were rummaging through his things, Xavier took a little peek outside and spotted a village across the lake. While we invited ourselves into the locals' homes, Xavier made his way to the big house, and there he came across a familiar face. Now, this gatekeeper's house was a little bigger than the other ones, but it was nothing special. It wasn't until Xavier went into the attic where the real fun began. He actually had a zeolighter on him, and with that he activated the portal. I ate a banana, and hesitantly stepped inside the portal not knowing what I'd find on the other side. 
Xavier did the same, and then we were exposed to a whole new world with monsters the likes of which we had never seen before. Our gear did no damage to them. For some reason, our vanilla tools, they just weren't effective in that dimension. After realizing this, we quickly made our way out of there. We soon found ourselves in an ice biome, and that's when we came across the Frost Maw, some type of icy snow bear monster. Xavier decided to wake him up with an arrow to the face, and let's just say, it was downhill from there. The Frost Maw was able to freeze us in place. Realizing that we weren't strong enough to kill him yet, Xavier and I thought that it was best to make a tactical retreat. Once again, we set sail, only for this to happen. We're sailing towards the west. I see a ship! I see the freaking the going merry Oh! I'm getting pulled under! Help me! I'm getting pulled under! I'm getting pulled under! I'm getting pulled under! Hey, why? After our unfortunate demise, we decided to backtrack. We went to the cherry tree forest and decided that this would be the ideal place for our home. After that, we decided to clear out the area, but first things first, we needed to get our materials back. Luckily for Noah and I, there was a cave directly beneath our feet. Iron, diamonds, and when I say diamonds, I mean plenty of diamonds. Although some of us found more diamonds than others. Hey, if you already have like a full thing of diamonds and all that- But I don't have like tools. While Xavier was up on the surface dealing with the Blood Moon, a type of event that amplifies the spawn rate for mobs, but it sounds worse than it actually is. While we were playing catch-up, Xavier went down into the mine. He decided to collect some obsidian for our future nether portal, and once he was done with that, he went back to the surface where he saw me building a bridge. The first structure for our new base. All that was left to do was to build the portal, light it, and see what was on the other side. Luckily for us, our nether spawn was relatively safe. Back in the overworld, I was making progress on my bridge, but we still needed a home. So we sat down, we talked it out, and we made plans for our illustrious abode. We're back, and now it's time for a house tour. You ready, Noah? Of course I'm ready, always. All right, let's go. So, we carved a little canyon here, and that gives us access to the place. Here we go. This is the place, and I gotta say, it was a nightmare to build. Wouldn't you agree, Noah? It was quite the hassle. Okay, so the, sp the house is a little uh, empty. Can't tell. So let's just walk around. This is gonna be the kitchen. Uh, this is our storage room for now. Don't know what we're going to do up there. And then over here, we're going to have our little sleeping area. And, uh, yeah. After that, it was time to make this house a home. We decided to work on the kitchen, the most important room of the house, where Xavier went a little too out of control with the drawers. Every base also needs a portal room. I quickly went to work on that, carving coals inside of a mountain. It was time to return to the Everdon. Knowing what we know now, we knew our tools weren't going to be that effective, so it was time to craft some new ones. We basically had to start over. And I kid you not, it was like starting from square one again. We had to chop down trees, we had to get stone tools, we had to look for caves. But I will admit that it felt like we were playing Minecraft for the first time again. Xavier ended up finding these red gems and he was able to craft a sword with them. Good thing too. He was going to need it considering that in this dimension, our weapons were useless. Having that red sword was going to help against those giant bugs that were living in the cave. We then discovered the Everdon's version of iron ore. If you actually put this stuff into a furnace, you can turn it into materials used for crafting armor. And once we had enough to make a full set, it was finally time to explore. And luckily for us, it didn't take long to find a tower. And not just any tower. This was the Alchemist Tower, the first boss of the Everdon dimension. The tower it had a protective spell. We couldn't break any blocks until we killed the alchemist. Before we went any further, we went back outside to craft some shields made out of a stone known as Moonstone. We then went back in and came across a witch's room. 
It was a type of lab, and she was growing some type of tree with fruit. It was clear on what we had to do. Anyways, we killed the witch, and then we took her stuff. After that, it was time to move on to the next floor. We then came across a dungeon where they were jailing a couple of real ones. Xavier tried to break out the fellas, but like I said, we couldn't break blocks until we killed the alchemist. So, we knew exactly what we needed to do. It was time to face the alchemist. We stood around him while he charged up. Thinking this was going to be an easy fight, we soon came to the realization of how wrong we were when the alchemist finally showed us his true powers. We were blinded, we were poisoned, we were shot at! We had to run around avoiding falling spikes he was spawning from the ceiling. One by one we fell. First me, then Xavier, then Noah. It was pretty obvious of how underprepared we really were. So we did what we do best. A little off-camera mining. And for some reason Noah felt the need to do a little jig for you, so here's that. With our new Diopside gear, the green armor, which is basically the Everdon's equivalent to diamond armor, it was time for us to have our revenge. Slowly but surely, we whittled his health away, until we entered phase two. The water in the room turned into lava, and the poison in the corners turned into instant harming. But no matter how much he tried to heal himself, his demise was inevitable. Eventually, Noah got the final blow, and the alchemist was no more. From there on, there was only one thing left for us to do. Liberate the fellas. We decided to try our hands at a bigger beast. We made our way to the Everdon's poison dungeon. A nasty maze infested with poisonous spiders. There we came face to face with the Ragnarok, the spider boss. Needless to say, it didn't go our way. We died, and we tried, and we died again. Looks like it's back to the drawing board. Back at home, Xavier decided to make a twilight portal, but it wasn't without its consequences. Uh, hey. Fix the thing, break, break the fire. Then he got stuck in a chair. I don't know how, I don't know why, but he did. Fortunately, he was able to get out. I crafted some eye vendors because now we were getting ready to go to the end. I then passed out the celebratory egg sandwiches that we'd only eat once we killed the dragon. Dang, that looked good! Xavier threw the eye vendor and we were off. Although, not all of us made it. The stronghold was incredible, but Noah was concerned that we didn't have any beds. I told him that we'd find some and he didn't believe me until... Well, we found them. An entire room full of more beds than we could have ever hoped for. But Noah was mad because Xavier was doing a little trolling. Here! I'm literally trying to get in here and you block me off! The portal was activated, and now it was time for us to jump in. On the other side, we spawned in the middle of the void. Once we got to the island, we had to tunnel to the top. Oh my god, what Whoa. the- I ran back into the tunnel with half my health knowing that there was no going back now. One by one, we went to each tower, taking out each crystal. And when we thought we had this in the bag, the Endermen got in the way. We didn't think to bring any pumpkins, and there were just so many of them. Wave after wave, they just kept attacking. They were relentless. When it came to actually hitting the dragon, we couldn't. He just kept flinging us away. Death after death, we finally decided to get pumpkins to make it a little easier. And the cool thing about this mod pack is that you can actually see through the pumpkins. I'm not lying when I tell you that this dragon battle took us hours. After a lot of death, we finally killed him. And you know what I got for all that work? Zippo! Nothing. Not even two levels of XP. I didn't get a single thing. With the dragon dead, it was time to explore the outer end. I threw a pearl into the portal, and I was greeted with an end unlike any I had ever seen before. I carefully climbed down the tree where I spawned, and at the bottom, I was exposed to this beautiful alien forest. First, I stopped and made myself a snack out of this endstone furnace because I knew that this was going to be a long journey. Hopping from island to island was going to be a little tricky, especially because I didn't have an elytra yet. Exploring on foot, I came across a couple of ruins, including a ruined nether portal. I was pretty surprised to see one of these in the end. And inside the chest, a lot of gold. Everything was going well until I was attacked by the little endermite. Then all of a sudden, Noah just came out of nowhere. Like, I have no idea where he came from, but he brought food with him, so I was more than happy to have him as my traveling companion. Soon we were out of the forest. We were approaching a structure, and then that's when we spotted this weird bacteria-like creature and those floating worms. Soon we were mining inside of the building, and that's when we discovered a new resource, some type of purple diamond named Corundum. But Corundum wasn't the only thing we found. All of a sudden, we were being swarmed by these flying shulker boxes named Propulks. I had to retreat outside because they nearly killed me. 
My inventory was also getting pretty full, so Noah placed down a shulker box so I could take some weight off. We figured there was a spawner, and once I went inside to break it, my game froze. And, well, you can guess what happened next. Noah cleared away for me to get my stuff back, and when I saw an opening, I ran inside and went for it. I quickly broke the spawner, and then I realized there was a second one. I then broke that one, and once they were all gone, we killed all the Propulks and mined all the corundum we could carry. Back in the overworld, it was time to prepare for the next boss, so Noah had me craft some cages, and then I did a little farming. The goal was to catch flies, trap them in the cages, and then breed them. Now, I don't know why we needed to do this, but Noah insisted that it was essential. I was able to catch a couple, and then after that I had to build a wall around our new garden. Noah was gonna build some type of fly breeding center, and once he did that, we took the two flies, put them in the fly breeding center, and after that they went to town. I guess he was trying to create some type of homunculus by fusing the fly larva with that bacteria we saw in the end. Like I said, I don't get the process, but eventually he just threw that into the end, and somehow the void worm spawned. The void worm was an abomination, a man-made horror. In its anger, it started attacking its creators with projectiles, and well, I instantly died. We tried to take shelter in the base we made for the Ender Dragon battle, but our shelter wasn't very effective. If you hit the Voidworm in the wrong spot, then it splits into smaller worms, but eventually we killed it. After that, we had decided we had had enough of fighting cosmic horrors, so we chose to fight mythological ones instead, with the first being the Naga, the snake boss of the Twilight Forest. Since it was the first boss, it was pretty easy to kill. After that, we went to the Lich Tower, where the second boss awaited us, the Lich King. Now, the Lich King was a little trickier. First of all, he was able to duplicate himself. Second, he actually had shields around him, so before we could actually inflict damage, we had to break the shields. But once the shields were broken, it was bye-bye Lich King. After fighting three bosses in a row, it was time for a little break. Noah made some hamburgers, I checked on the community cow, and then I went to go take a look at the chicken farm I had started. Also, by this point we were stocked with food, we had also gathered some netherite, and we figured out how to apply shaders. We weren't done with the bosses of the Twilight Forest just yet, so we made our way to the Minotaur Maze, an underground labyrinth of tunnels full of loot and danger. And by danger, I mean these massive bugs that could spew fire out of their mouths, or pick you up with their pincers, and squeeze you to death. And then there were also the Minotaurs, although the Minotaurs we dealt with them easily. It's boil eight. What is After that, one of those firebugs came around the corner, and then it burned me to a crisp. We also came across these weird maze slimes that looked like regular slimes, but they were also textured like bricks. Waiting for us at the end of the maze was the man himself, the Minishroom, and he was not happy to see us. After he broke out of his cage, he charged at us. Luckily, we were able to get out of the way in time, and the Noah was able to put him down. It was a pretty easy battle. We decided to go check out his room, see what kind of loot he left behind, and there was a lot of iron and a lot of Twilight Forest armor. To celebrate our victory, we feasted on his flesh by having some Meef Stroganoff. Then it was on to the next boss, the Hydra. And let's just say that the Hydra was no joke. Standing very tall with three heads, each spewing fire from its mouth, the Hydra proved to be a very difficult adversary. We circled him, trying to find his weak points, and eventually we discovered that arrows were going to be most effective. Keeping our distance was key if we didn't want to get charred to death. Arrow after arrow, we continued to do damage, but the Hydra was relentless. He continued to shoot firebombs from his mouth. I was firing so many arrows, I wasn't even keeping track of where I was aiming anymore, and I accidentally shot Noah. In the end, the Hydra went out in a fantastic explosion, and those shaders, well, they were very bright when that happened. We collected his loot, and then we decided it would be a good idea to wear the trophies as helmets. Wearing the skulls of our enemies, we decided to plan our next course of action. Noah was telling us that for the next boss, we were going to have to defile some graves. Xavier couldn't wait. We journeyed into the dark forest, and we came across a ruined road, and at the end of the road, was the entrance to the catacombs where we would find our boss. In order to get inside, we had to place a trophy on the pedestal, and once that happened, the door opened, and we jumped right in. We looked around, and we were surrounded by multiple graves, some of which had loot. Inside the catacombs were these weapon-wielding, armor-wearing goblicons. There were also spawners that created these weird crabs wearing helmets. Luckily for me, I still had my lucky lava bucket, and well, you know what I did. Soon as they died, we broke the spawner, and we moved on. It took us quite a while to get there, but we finally found it, 
the boss room, and inside were the graves of the people that we had to put down. During the battle, I was asking Noah and Xavier what it would be like to be a ghost, having to die a second time. Once the Phantom Knights were defeated, a chest spawned, and inside, the trophy and all of their armor. We were almost done, but we had a couple of bosses to go. Our next stop was the Urgast Tower. We couldn't find a way inside, so I tried to use my lucky lava bucket, but that didn't work. Then we realized that the walls were actually the doors. Now on the inside, we entered a large room, and we were greeted by spiders. The next room was even bigger, a tall and empty space full of floating platforms. We didn't have any blocks on us, and well, we're terrible at parkour. We then realized that the room was actually one giant puzzle. With the flip of a lever, a platform would appear. Little did we know that it would disappear shortly after. Luckily, we were saved by a water bucket, at least until Xavier scooped it up and almost left us to die. Just when we thought we were in the clear, on the next floor we were ambushed by a mob of blazes, some of which were even wearing armor. We tried to take cover from the fire, and eventually we found the spawner. Other than my run into a new type of golem, it was pretty straightforward. Just when I thought I got to the top, I realized that I was only halfway there. I had fallen behind and Noah and Xavier were already fighting the boss. But once I had finally caught up, I joined them in the attack. Arrows were flying, lightning was striking, and these little baby ghasts, they were just spawning out of nowhere. Xavier killed the boss, no surprise there, and once again a chest appeared. Inside was the trophy, and a bunch of other cool items. I'm not gonna lie, this trophy was my favorite. Our next target was the Alpha Yeti. This mystical snow bear man could only be found in an ice cave. Of course, I had forgotten that this cave was also home to hundreds of little snow bear men. When the Alpha Yeti spawned, I figured that my lava bucket would do the job, so I poured down some lava, and then he froze it! But in the end, that didn't matter. Like the bosses before him, all it took was a few arrows to finally bring him down. Like a bunch of vultures, we all rushed in to pick up his loot. I tried his trophy on while Xavier made himself a more cutesy version. But we weren't done with the snow just yet. Now we had to make our way to the glacier, where we'd find ourselves an Ice Queen. One who lived at the top of that tall green tower. Simple enough, right? Wrong! Inside we encountered evil snowflakes and ghost guards. We had to be careful, because some of the snowflakes were explosive. We found some interesting loot, including an ice bow. Most of the tower was more or less the same. Evil snowflakes and whatnot. When it came to fighting the Ice Queen, for some reason she just really wanted me dead. Like, she wouldn't stop following me. No matter how much distance I put between her and I, she was always there. She even ignored Xavier when he was standing right behind her. Thankfully, they trapped her, and after that, it didn't take long for her to fall as well. Xavier was quick to put her trophy on, and something about this one just made me a little uncomfortable. After conquering the Twilight Forest, it was time for us to conquer new dimensions. We needed to get to the Abyss, but before we could do that, we had a couple of errands to run in the end. Our main goal was to find a ruined End Citadel. Home of the one and only Ender Guardian. But first things first, if we were gonna get around, we needed to stock up on some Ender Pearls. A lot of Endermen died. During our expedition, Xavier and I came across many ruins and multiple cool sites. Although some moments were a little more nerve wracking than others. Now, I gotta tell you, Better End Forge adds a ton of stuff to the end. Places like this one, the Amberland Biome. I mean, just look at it! Never have I ever seen anything like that in the end before. It was just such a cozy biome. And then there were also these little glowing fireflies that added that little dash of ambiance that just tied it all together. It was so nice that we even talked about building a second home there. But as soon as we left the forest, we found the jackpot. We found an end city. And not just any type of end city, this was a super end city. This place was packed full of shulkers and at some points it was just impossible to avoid them. At the top of one of the towers, I found what looked like an enchantment room and a lot of shulker boxes, but they were just shulker boxes. All of them, they were empty, so yeah, not that exciting. But you know what, I can't complain. Free storage is free storage. After that, we looted more chests, and inside of them there was a lot of iron and a lot of diamond tools, even a diamond knife. Anytime we came across a spawner, we had to break it. I mean, just look at how many shulkers there were. At the top of the end city, we found more diamonds, more iron, even some enchanted books, but still no elytra. Once finished with the end city, we decided to move on, and luck would have it that we ran into another dungeon a few moments later, this one being a type of 
end fortress, very similar to the nether fortress. Coming to the end definitely has its perks, I mean it doesn't cheat you out of the loot. In one chest we found multiple pickaxes, all with decent enchantments. Even the diamond armor was decent. Although it had some curses, I'd still put it on. For a brief while, Noah, Xavier, and I, we parted ways. If we were gonna find the end citadel, then we thought it would be better to cover more ground if we all just split up. That's when I came across the most dangerous biome in the end. On another island, I saw what looked like a forest of brain trees. And tucked away behind the trees was this abandoned structure. Now, I was thinking, hey, that's probably the end citadel. So I made my way over there. That proved to be one of my biggest mistakes on this expedition because as soon as I landed, phantoms were spawning and all of the Endermen, they were hostile, even if you didn't look at them. One of them nearly killed me, but I found shelter in a ruined end boat. But fate works in mysterious ways. Had I not been chased into that shelter, I never would have found my Elytra. But I did die. Ended up wasting a perfectly good totem too. When I made it back, the group and I, we decided to check out the ruins I had spotted. There was a spawner, we broke it, and then we went up the stairs, only to find more Endermen and another spawner. But there was a little surprise in this one. There was an Ender Dragon egg. I used the old torch method and I was able to collect that egg. Unfortunately, this was not the End Citadel. There was no End Guardian in sight, so the journey had to continue. Halfway through, we discovered these giant ice stars. These things were massive, and I'm not gonna lie, they did creep out Xavier a little. I decided to get a closer look, and yeah, they were made out of ice. Emerald ice. And nearby was what looked like a weird type of village. And out of the darkness of the forest, we found what we believed was the residence of the Stilt House. A shadow man. Now, the inside of the house wasn't nothing special. I mean, it looked cool, but there wasn't anything worth taking. Although it would make a nice base of operations should we decide to stay in the end even longer. Moving on, we stumbled across a tower, and underneath the tower was a type of blue dungeon, home to these creatures that looked like the Pokemon Trap Inch. Inside the blue labyrinth was the end's version of a mob dungeon, but this one was spawning Endermites, so we quickly had to break the spawners. Once again, we were amazed by Betterrand Forge when we came across this rainbow crystal biome. See, it was part of our plans to make mending books. Mending books are pretty rare, so I was pretty surprised when I found out that you could actually craft them. And one of the main ingredients we needed was an enchanted petal. And to make an enchanted petal, you needed rainbow crystals. We had collected plenty of those, and then it was almost time to go back. But right before we went home, we discovered what we were looking for the entire time, the ruined and citadel. You have no idea how excited we were after finding this. I mean, it took us hours upon hours to actually find this place. So we went inside, and there we encountered a couple of end golems. Now, I'm not gonna lie, these things, they were pretty strong. They packed a punch. After the first one died, he dropped an item called a Void Rune, and if you right-click that item, you get these weird spikes that come out of the ground. We then found the second one, took him out, and then after that, all that was left for us to do was kill the Ender Guardian. While searching for him, I came across a grate, so I decided to investigate further, and it turns out, I found the boss chamber. In the center of the room was a little box, and for some reason, it didn't occur to us that that was the spawner. We were pretty caught off guard when he just appeared out of nowhere. Now his attacks, they were very similar to the Ender Golems. He'd slam the ground, and then spikes came out of the floor. But the one thing we weren't expecting was for the floor to actually break. We fell into a lower chamber, and there, the second half of the battle began. Now, I drew his attention away from the other guys so that they could land hits on him, but he smashed me to a pulp. But fortunately, I was able to get back in time to watch him die. After his defeat, the guys went back to the overworld. They had had enough of the end, but my job wasn't done. I still needed to find a flower petal. I saw many pretty sights along the way, including this massive blue flower. Then things got a little more interesting. I then came across a circus tent. When I landed, I discovered that it was actually called an aviary, and this place was home to some of the most dangerous mobs I had ever encountered. This place was so big that Xavier decided to come back. We needed to explore, but little did we know that this place was home to skeletons wearing netherite armor, and not only that, they could sprint. I found myself a little hiding spot, and I soon realized that I was way out of my league when I saw that there were mobs with guardians for heads. I had no plans on dying in the end, so I decided to leave it all behind and come back when I was ready. I was only looking for a flower. 
After that, I found myself in a sulfur springs biome. This is exactly where I needed to be, because underneath these sulfur springs was an underwater lake. I dug down to get to the water, and then I found a mine shaft. An end mine shaft, made out of purple glass and purple blocks. And behind the glass, well, wouldn't you know it, I saw exactly what I needed. A cluster of all the flowers I could possibly need. Carefully avoiding the jellyfish, I swam to the flowers, collected the petals, and after that, I went home because it was time to make some mending books. Back in the overworld, the house was getting a little too crammed, so I decided to prepare a little space where I could make my mending books. But to make these, I was going to need more than just a simple crafting table. I needed enough space for a special setup that I would use for a process called infusion. I planned on doing this outside on the hill across from our house, and I love the way it came out. With my setup finally complete, it was now time to craft the enchanted petal. Four rainbow crystals on each side, and a petal in the center. We were one step closer to making our mending books. After killing the void worm, we were able to claim some rewards from our quest, including blocks used for building the abyss portal. Xavier activated the portal using the activator. After that, we stepped inside, and well, we had no idea that all of our nightmares were about to come true. On the other side was a world covered in darkness. A world of glowing fungus and strange creatures. Xavier mentioned that the air was infected, and that if we didn't craft the antidote soon, we were gonna die. We needed to make an infuse bench. But before we could do that, we needed some basic materials, including Loran, an item extracted from the Loran flower. As we wandered through the abyss, the infection was beginning to take hold, but we found the Loran flower soon enough. After that, we combined the Loran with an Inkerith gem, a resource we found while mining. With our Loran energy, we were able to use it as a power source for our extractor, and with the extractor, we were able to create a material called Somnium, which we extracted from the Loran. After using the Somnium to make test tubes, we were finally able to make our infuse table, which we also powered with Loran energy. After that, it was pretty straightforward. All we had to do was use rotten flesh to create our anti-infection essence, and from there, we were good to go. Or so we thought. Now, we didn't get this on camera, but we died multiple times. You're gonna see in the footage there's these spiders known as end spiders, and well, they're more dangerous than they look. It was so bad that we actually had to relocate our base to a different area where they spawned less frequently. There we set up a little treehouse. <laughs> we even went so far as to building a wall around our treehouse. Now, our main reason for being in the Abyss was so that we could craft the weapons and armor. The Abyss mod has some great tools, but the process of getting those is fairly difficult. We needed a resource known as Fusion Slime, and we could only get that by killing these slime spiders. And help! Oh! Help! Get it, no, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it! Oh my god! Oh! We eventually had to take to the trees, because if we were on the ground, we wouldn't last more than a minute. And if you died, getting your stuff was next to impossible. Okay, you, look, you think I can make that jump to that tall mushroom right there, right next to my body? You could do it. <laughs> oh no, I missed my block! Uh oh. No! Oh, Girl, I you. John! Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> we also had to worry about crystal golems. Another justifiable reason for us to stay in the trees. What are they gonna do now? We came to the realization that we were very underprepared. It was time to use our brains and figure out what our next move was gonna be. And it was in this moment that we came up with the original idea of upgrading our armor if we wanted to survive. We went back to making more mending books and then we crafted some of the lower tier weapons of the Abyss mod. We were also running out of space in our chests, so we needed to clear out some junk, including these dragon eggs. We didn't want to toss them, so we decided to hatch them, see what we could get. After patiently waiting for what seemed like an eternity, my dragon finally hatched and I got another dragon. Then I waited with Noah and supported him through the hatching process of his dragon egg. But I got tired of waiting, so I decided to hatch dragon egg number two. Then I named my first dragon Little Whiner. Dragon Egg number 2 hatched, and this time it was an Ender Dragon. Then we upgraded our armor with Blazerite. With Blazerite armor, we were essentially immune to fire and lava, perfect for exploring the Nether. Our next goal was to craft Ultimarite armor, which is essentially the ultimate Netherite armor in better Minecraft. To do this, we needed multiple Netherite ingots, and on top of that, we also needed a Nether Star, which means we needed to kill a bunch of Wither Skeletons or find a Wither Skeleton spawner. During the Nether Expedition, we came across multiple new Nether biomes, including a Glowstone biome. And in that Glowstone biome was a blast from the past. We came across what looked like an Aether portal. 
I then went toe to toe with a glow Skeeto, and then Noah and I stumbled upon what looked like another fortress. Now this was a fortress unlike anything I had ever seen before. And what I assumed was the main room were these statues. And when I got closer, the statues actually came to life and started attacking us. There were also these blocks on the sides emitting some type of weird particle. And, well, I don't know if they were going to poison us or not, so we broke them. We weren't going to take any chances. And one of the rooms of the strange fortress was another room. A type of chamber underneath the ground. We dropped out to do a little more investigating, and we realized that this was a treasure room. We carefully broke blocks, being sure not to set off any traps. We weren't sure if this was like a desert temple. Didn't want to set off any hidden TNT. And the loot was pretty good. Not gonna say it was bad. Some diamonds, some iron, but nothing we really needed. Things didn't get interesting until we found a boss arena. A place home to the netherite monstrosity. Safely perched above him, we were under the impression that we were perfectly safe, and why wouldn't we? Look at all the space between us and him. But the boss was smarter than he looked, and somehow he managed to climb the wall and do damage to us. And the second I took that damage, I was out of there. I don't know what Noah did, but I knew I was safe. When reinforcements had arrived, I returned, happy to see that Noah was still alive. I even found some ancient debris. Our plan was pretty simple. It was a plan that we had followed multiple times. Xavier does the damage while John gets chased. I don't know why it works that way, I don't know why they're always attracted to me, but that's just how it goes, and I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty effective plan. So I did a couple laps around the arena, Xavier did some damage, and eventually the monster fell. After that we had checked out the loot, and he dropped this massive hammer. By right-clicking the hammer, it would slam into the ground, and you would feel this type of splash damage. After that we had parted ways because the guys were running short on fireworks, but I wasn't done. And eventually, I found what we were looking for, a type of dungeon, and inside the dungeon, the Wither Skeleton Spawner. I prepared a little mob trap, and after that, the skeletons were spawning. All that was left to do was for me to reap the rewards. Now, I had no idea where I was, and I wanted to go back home, so I decided to build myself another portal, get back into the overworld, and I don't know if we got this on camera, I don't remember, but Xavier eventually flew to me, we placed a waystone, and I was able to teleport back. Jumping from one dimension to the next, we were now in the end, with our next objective, that being to kill the Wither. Now the idea was to spawn him under the return portal. When he spawned, he would be stuck, and we would be able to easily put him down. But that only works if you don't attack him with a knockback sword, and well, wouldn't you know it, Xavier had a knockback sword. He phased through the portal, and after that it was open season on us, as well as every single Enderman. Of course, he wasn't as challenging as the other bosses we had faced, so after a couple of deaths, far fewer than our previous encounters, taking out the Wither was a walk in the park. After that mishap, we were careful to hit him only with swords that didn't have knockback. And soon enough, we were farming Withers. Spawn, kill, rinse, and repeat. At the end of the process, we had more Nether Stars than we knew what to do with. Back at the base, we took all of our unique netherite ingots, and we combined them into ultimarite ingots. It was finally time to craft our ultimarite armor. And then after that we got Ingrith armor. That's the armor made out of the Abyss gems combined with netherite armor. At this point, the only thing in our minds was to settle some scores with some old friends in the Everdon. We made our way back to the poisonous maze, and this time we were ready to fight Arachnark. And this second time around, it was so much easier. With our new set of armor and weapons, as well as some of our new magic items, Arachnark didn't stand a chance. Though the spider put up a good fight, it was only a matter of time before we finally crushed that bug. But now it was time to move on. Our next stop was the Everbrights. There we would pay a special visit to the alchemist's big brother, the Summoner. Now the Summoner's main form of attack was to summon golems. Although when it came to our Ingerith armor, these golems, they couldn't really do a lot of damage to us. And the Summoner, just like his brother the Alchemist, was no match for our resolve. At the end of that battle, all of us were granted an Ethereal Arc, and that gave us 50% more movement speed. With the Alchemist, Arachnark, and now the Summoner dead, we had one more boss to face for the Blue Skies mod. Our enemy awaited us in a giant ziggurat-like structure. At the top of this green layer was a pink forest, with trees very similar to the ones back home. Inside, we found ourselves wandering through a maze of green rooms, home to the Stonelets, a type of rock creature ready to defend their home. After locating all the dungeon keys, we made our way to the top floor, where we'd find the boss room. There, we would enter another arena, terribly unprepared. Our enemy, the Starlet Crusher, was a giant tree. And well, what's the best way to take down a tree? You have to chop it down, and that tends to be easy, 
if you have an axe. And that's the one thing we didn't have, and I'm not gonna lie, we read the quest log and it told us to bring an axe, and, well, I assumed we weren't gonna need it. In short, we had to wait for Noah to come bring us axes after he had died, and while we were doing that, we were avoiding these roots coming out of the ground while the Starlet Crusher hid behind this barrier of wood. But once we had our axes, we were able to quickly break the barrier, and we soon discovered that the Starlet Crusher, well, he could be paralyzed if he was pierced with a spear. So we started throwing spears, and sure enough, as soon as he was hit with them, he would be immobilized and open for attack. Xavier and I ended up chopping down Mother Nature's son, and then we admired the little sapling he left behind. This one dropped a nature arc, which gave me three extra hearts. After that, the only thing left for us to do was to take out the bosses in the abyss. I had already killed Crystal Golem while Xavier and Noah took out the other bosses. That left us with one last boss, the Nightblade. After crafting an Eye of the Abyss, we went back to the Abyss Dimension, unsure of the boss we were about to face because we had never seen the Nightblade before. When we got to the altar, I lit all of the torches with soul hearts, and after that, I placed the Eye of the Abyss into the altar. Shortly after, we witnessed some cool visuals, and then he spawned. The fastest enemy we had ever faced yet. After mopping the floor with no one nearly killing me, the Nightblade began to duplicate himself. I sought refuge in one of our little shacks, but he could teleport. We dealt as much damage as we could, but it was just so difficult when he kept spawning us, as well as every single mob, into the air. Luckily, I used this against him. While he teleported me into the air, I decided to glide down, and after that, I saw an opening. I went for it, and the Nightblade, like every other boss in this godforsaken mod pack, he was no more. But I was given blindness when that happened, and I didn't even know what he dropped, so yeah, so much for that. Anyways, that was Better Minecraft. Here's some cool footage of Noah making an egg, because he just wanted that to be the ending. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.